Welcome everyone to Cannabis News with Joe Claire. It is May 4th, 2018. The show is presented to you by the Marijuana Times. Go check out MarijuanaTimes.org for all the latest in the cannabis community, industry, and beyond. A bunch of great writers over there, including myself, and every episode of Cannabis News can be found there as well. MarijuanaTimes.org. Go check it out today. I'm talking about the uh, new High Times Cannabis Cup. It's going down this weekend in a first for that cannabis cup and a first in cannabis cup history, uh, at least in California. Also, uh, Maine, the progress there on recreational marijuana, and my much promised, many times promised, much uh, anticipated review that I've been teasing all week of Weed for the new part of the uh, docu series, the Weed docu series that Dr. Sanjay Gupta does over on CNN. I have seen it. Um, I have some thoughts and uh, some news, and we'll talk about all that coming up when I do a review of Weed 4. First, forget any of that, of course. Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSideCannabis.com, a site is spelled C-I-D-E. Check out the organic, all-natural pesticides that grow safe and poison-free with NatureSide. Don't use harmful chemicals on your grow. You want people ingesting that, and you want to pass regulations in the state that you're growing in. You want to be regulatory compliant. Nature Side can help you with all of that with their organic, all-natural pesticides and their expertise. NatureSideCannabis.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. This first story by Julia Granowitz over at MarijuanaTimes.org. Central Valley Cannabis Cup approved for on-site sale and consumption of cannabis. Apparently the recent um, event that went down in Southern California, the 420 event for high times uh they didn't end up getting their on-site consumption license and apparently there was not allowed to be any on-site consumption but apparently there was and it was just a big cluster f of bad planning well now uh, the central valley cannabis cup at cow expo fairgrounds is scheduled for this weekend may 4th and 5th they received their first temporary cannabis event license to allow on sales on-site sales and consumption. So it's going to be a cannabis cup in the United States where you can buy and sell, or buy and use cannabis on site, which seems like, you know, when you say it out loud, it seems like, well, isn't that, you know, that's the way it should be. And if you were one of the people, one of the people saying that, you would be right. It is how it should be. And again, it, as I've said many, many times, it, anything that forwards the, the, the cause, the cause of marijuana law reform, every inch of ground that is regained from the prohibition of marijuana that happened decades ago. We have to regain everything inch by inch. And if you're having a big cannabis event, it makes sense that you sell cannabis there and people use cannabis there. I mean, it's the way, you know, events work everywhere when it comes to alcohol. You know, you go to a sporting event or a club or whatever, you can go up to the bar, buy as much alcohol as you want, drink it while you're there. That's the whole point. And this is a specifically geared, I'm not saying, you know, they should sell joints at the, the baseball park, although one day maybe they will, and I I will not be objecting, I'll tell you that. I may go see more baseball games. But this is a cannabis-themed event. The notion that they, they can't use cannabis, they can't sell cannabis there, it makes no sense. And it's just part of that, you know, well, the mindset that still exists with some of, you know, marijuana is a very dangerous substance. It needs to be tightly controlled and regulated, and we got to make sure we know when people are using it and how much they're using, how much they're allowed to have, and when the store can close and when the store can open, and all of that. So if you are at uh, the Central Valley event this weekend, well, have fun. You're making history and advancing the cause of the mainstreaming and the normalization of cannabis so next story from MarijuanaMoment.net. Kyle Yeager over there. Maine lawmakers override governor's marijuana veto. Obviously, we've been covering Maine quite a bit here and their, their, their attempts to get some kind of regulations in place. Uh, marijuana possession and uh, is, is legal there, but sales are not legal. So the, you know, the black market gets to take advantage of that, obviously. This is the second time that Governor Paula Page has vetoed regulations when it comes to uh, recreational marijuana sales in Maine. But this time, they had a veto-proof majority. And when it came time to vote to actually override the governor's veto, they did so. Uh, the House voted 109 to 39 
to override LePage's veto in the Senate voted 28 to 6, thwarting the latest attempt by Governor Paul LePage to block voter approved cannabis ballot initiative from taking effect. Uh, David Boyer, who's the main political director uh, of the Marijuana Policy Project, told Marijuana Amendment, quote, There are parts of the bill that we liked and some parts that we didn't like. Ultimately, we're glad that the legislature is moving towards a regulated marketplace. We're approaching two years since Maine voters passed this, and adults in Maine deserve a place to purchase marijuana legally. Obviously, sales uh, California, Nevada, and Massachusetts all legalized at the same time that Maine did. Massachusetts is going to start sales here in less than two months. California has already started, and Las Vegas is in Nevada. Uh, they're coming up on their one-year anniversary of retail sales. So uh, Maine is definitely the one, uh, the state that is lagging in that area. And uh, LePage, he just, he's going to veto anything that has to do with marijuana. He does not like it. He does not approve of legalization. He wants to delay it in any way possible. But apparently his uh, delay tactics have run out, which is a good thing. And definitely good news for those con- cannabis consumers or want to be legal cannabis consumers in Maine. It's um, good news. More good news. This past week, uh, Sunday, I believe it was. Why well, I know it was. Weed 4, the fourth part of the Weed docu series by Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN, de- debuted. It's entitled Pot versus Pills. I've been promising all week I was going to do a review of it. And, well, the time has come. The much-awaited review. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, the heavy with the details. Obviously, you're going to watch it yourself if you want to watch it yourself. I will say a couple things. First of all, if you are addicted to opioids or know someone who is, or you're just looking for an alternative to opioids for whatever reason, and the reasons are numerous, if you just want to know more about marijuana and opioids and you're interested in the subject of maybe how you've been lied to all your life, because there's a lot of things in this documentary, you watch it, and if you place it next to what you were told growing up about marijuana, there are two totally different things. Now, obviously, this is more recent. There's a lot more research behind it than just you know, the one-off BS that you were given when you were a kid by the D.A.R.E. program or whatever. You know, the, I discussed this yesterday, the gateway theory, and, and it kills brain cells, and it gives you lung cancer. It leads you to a life of hard drugs and living in a gutter, so on and so forth. They just want to see... The alternative perspective of this is a healing medicine, is an amazing medicine. They can do things that no other substance on this planet can do. You want to watch Weed for Pot vs. Pills by Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN. Now, the reason I've been talking about this all week, I've devoted more time to this event than probably just about any other event that's come across since we started doing this show. And I believe this is episode 130, if memory serves me correctly. So we've been doing it for a while. It's big for a very specific reason. I've been talking about the influence that this series has had on marijuana and cannabis law reform and medical marijuana in the community and the country, period. You know, before Dr. Sanjay Gupta, hardly anybody knew what CBD was or what it did. And his him talking about it and doing a series about it on CNN exploded knowledge about it and people seeking knowledge about it. The thing of it is, is... Dr. Sanjay Gupta and people like him are in a very specific spot between the cannabis community and quote-unquote mainstream America. People like me, I mean, I like I love what I do. You know, I write, I do this show. Many people write about cannabis. They do podcasts, all that stuff. But for the most part, and obviously not completely 100%, but for the most part, people like myself and others who do this job or some variation of this job are preaching to the choir. Most people who watch this show or read my articles or whatever, they are looking for cannabis news. They want to know more about a specific issue. They want to learn more about a specific issue. They're already engaged in following the cannabis community and learning more about the cannabis plant and all that. Somebody like Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and I'm trying to think of someone else to compare him to. I guess you know Dr. Oz did a little bit of it, but I think people see Dr. Oz more of a uh, more of a uh, I don't know, like a pitch man or something. He doesn't have the the gravitas, the clout that somebody like Dr. Sanjay Gupta does. You know, middle America, people who don't care about marijuana, they don't know anything about marijuana. They think it's evil. They don't think you should be allowed to have it, so on and so forth. They've been watching Dr. Sanjay Gupta on TV for years, talking about all kinds of health issues and, and everything. And they know that he said what he said years ago about medical marijuana. He wasn't impressed. He wasn't buying it. 
He didn't think it was uh, the research was solid. He didn't think medical marijuana was really a robust thing that he obviously now believes it to be. And him doing the weed series caused a lot of people to look into this issue. He's now obviously a lot of people who watch Weed Four and all the other ones. They're saying people who watch this show. They are the choir that is being preached to. They're somewhere on the journey from the start that well, marijuana should be legal and it's evil to marijuana should be legal. And what I was told about it is a lie. They're all on that journey and they're interested. A lot of people that watch this, they might not be on that journey at all. They may just like Dr. Sanjay Gupta and they may say to themselves, well, he's saying that the things I've been told about this are wrong. Maybe I should listen. Maybe I should watch this documentary. Maybe I should look into the issue more. And again, I'm racking my brain and I can't, if you can think of someone, please, please leave in the comments of this video. I can't think of anyone with that much clout speaking this publicly about and I don't mean politicians. Don't mean politicians are used car salesmen. Tons of politicians have switched and they're out, you know, they're on the bandwagon now. They don't carry the influence that someone like Dr. Sanjay Gupta does. You know, people assume that politicians are lying and they're full of crap for whatever stance they take. And if you assume that, well, you're, I mean, if you're a betting person, you're probably right most of the time. Again, I can't, I'm, I'm racking my brain. He's when I talk. I can't think of anyone else with this much clout that bridges the two communities between the mainstream 70-year-old woman who's sitting at home and, you know, watches soap operas and thinks marijuana is evil because that's what she was told when she was a kid and doesn't think anything else about it. Now she sees this person who she trusts, who she's taken medical advice from probably through the TV. And he's saying, hey, I thought all the things that you thought, a uh, lady watching the television, but I looked into it and I was wrong and I'm publicly admitting I'm wrong and I'm, you know, I mean, he, not only did Gupta admit that he was wrong, he's really... He's really beat the dead horse in the other direction. I mean, he's he's really honed in on this. You know, I don't know what else he does. I guess he's still on CNN talking about other health issues. But as far as I know, this is like his main thing now, making weed documentaries, which is fantastic. But he's reaching that segment of the population and bringing more people in to look into this issue than just about any other outlet or person I can think of. Again, the politicians, they don't count. And there's been, you know, there's... Obviously, there's celebrities and, and people like Willie Nelson or Snoop Dogg or whatever, but they don't occupy the same part of the stratosphere when it comes to mainstream people, quote unquote mainstream people who either believe the lies about marijuana or don't or don't care or don't think you should be able to use it. They think they think medical marijuana is bull, whatever. Hardly, there's nobody. Bridging the gap like Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and that's why I made such a big deal about this. And when Weed 5 comes out, I make a big deal about that too. It's incredibly influential. If you've seen what's happened with CBD over the last few years and children, and he talks about the FDA approval of the uh, of Epidiolex, which we've talked about on the show. He talks about all kinds of stuff. You know, talks to um, NFL players and, and um, doctors and researchers. Uh, Patrick Kennedy's on there for a little bit talking about, you know, you know, talking about, we need to hold up on the medical marijuana bandwagon. You know, we got some... We got these other pills over here. They're not as bad as the opioids. And, you know, she's so back off a little bit and we need to go with that. He covers all of that. So, again, I would highly recommend checking out Weed 4 on CNN. It's on CNN On Demand and, you know, the CNN app or whatever. All of those places. Now, the, the documentary starts with the story of Mike James, who's an NFL player who got hurt, started using medical marijuana. He became the first player to uh, petition the NFL, um, for a permission to use to use um, medical marijuana. Uh, of course, the NFL bans marijuana, and they've told uh, Mike James that, you know, I'm just calling him Mike James, Mike James, who's a running back, uh, that he's failed tests before for marijuana, and he knows at any point he could be kicked off you know, kicked out of the NFL, which is obviously true now because he's made, he's been, he's in this documentary, he's been very public about his, his, uh, use. Um, and it's a very, it's a really interesting story that keeps going, Gupta keeps going back to throughout the, uh, the documentary. So throughout the documentary, they talk about the fact that he had applied for uh, a therapeutic, therapeutic use exemption for cannabis from uh, the NFL, and at the very end of the documentary, because this news came out just as the documentary was coming out, they put a little thing at the end uh, saying that uh, Mike James was rejected by the NFL for, uh, with his petition to, um, to use medical marijuana and be exempted 
from the ban that the NFL currently has on medical marijuana. And uh, so about the same time the documentary was coming out, he was, or just before the documentary came out, the NFL announced that he was denied that exemption, which is not surprising. And they talk about some of the documentary, the Players Association is starting to move on this issue, which will cause the NFL management itself and the owners themselves to move on the issue. He also points out how the NFL is really like kind of a ground zero when it comes to opioid use because these guys are injured. They're put on all kinds of painkillers, uh, especially they, they focus on uh, Mike James and Kyle Turley in the documentary. And it's really, well, it's, you never get, no matter how much you follow this community and, and the news of cannabis and all that, you never get used to the fact that there's such a disconnect. I mean, you see this guy, you watch him in this documentary and you think, Okay, he made a choice. He doesn't like the pills. They were bad. They left him in a stupor. Uh, they didn't work well enough for him to not be in pain. Marijuana is the opposite. He even points out that he's coherent. He's relatively pain-free. He's able to you know, be with his, fi- his family and his kids. And to, to look at those two sides and say, well, one is, one is bad, one is good. I mean, we all would, we all would agree which one the good one is. But the NFL says the good one is, well, you remember that part where you were like in a stupor and you were still in pain and you couldn't play with your kids or be around your kids? That's the one we're picking. And they, they interview some guy from the NFL or whatever, and he's like, oh, well, we, you know, we need, and Patrick Kennedy harps on the same thing. We need FDA, blah, 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 approval. And, you know, let's forget about the fact that tens of thousands of people die every year from FDA approved products, whatever. They, they pretend that, the way he was before, that's the way he needs to be. And I understand people being wrong about things, but the NFL and the Players Association, they're really moving incredibly slowly on this for a group of, for a, a, a league full of men who are smashing into each other. And when they go in and look in their brains afterwards, after they die, they find just about every single one of them has some sort of brain damage. Not to mention the foot pain, knee pain, ankles, arms, neck, back, hips, uh, jaw. They're, they're all, they're in pain everywhere. Head to toe, they're being messed up and dis- the, their brains are being destroyed by these pills. And the NFL is like, no, no, we're going to look into this. And when they finally have a player who actually steps up, risks his entire career to say, I'm, I'm, I'm applying for this exemption, this medical marijuana exemption, so I can use medical marijuana and continue to live the life that I have built and that I like now that I'm off the pills. The NFL says, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And I, I say it's weird because we're not used to it because it happens everywhere. You know, the VA does it and the government does it with, with soldiers. Got PTSD? You want to smoke a joint? Maybe it'll help you sleep. Maybe you'll get rid of the nightmares, the anxiety, the, you know, help you uh, interact better socially with people. No, none of that. Here's these pills that are going to put you in a stone stupor to where you can't function. And they'll kind of work. Maybe they won't kind of work. And all, by the way, uh, they're going to destroy your liver and your brain and, and various other organs Along the way, that's the one we're going to pick. And that's the whole basis of marijuana prohibition, period. The other things are good. Marijuana's bad. Don't do marijuana. That's the, the final word. But again, I can't, I can't be too cynical. Things are changing. And this, this weed series and uh, others are uh, helping change the landscape. And the, the changes seem to be coming quicker and quicker as time goes on. And that's always a good thing. We'll continue to be here on Cannabis News to do our part. It's May 4th, 2018. Go check us out on MarijuanaTimes.org. Thank you to NatureSideCannabis.com for being a proud sponsor of the show. Check out the organic, all-natural pesticides, NatureSideCannabis.com. Go check out all the articles and videos on MarijuanaTimes.org. That's it for the week. Your weekend has officially started. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out. And we'll see you next time on Cannabis News. (laughs) 